Now let's discuss about respiratory zone. We have discussed that respiratory zone is the area where gases exchange will happen. And also we have seen respiratory zone includes respiratory bronchioles, alveolar ducts, alveolar sacs. All these three together called as acinus. Now what is the lining epithelium? The lining epithelium in conducting zone is pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium in conducting zone. Here in respiratory zone the lining epithelium is simple squamous epithelium. Now why it is simple squamous epithelium? Why because for exchange of gases the epithelium lining epithelium should be as thin as it should be. Okay, if it is thin then only exchange will happen. So simple squamous one single lined epithelium single layer of epithelium will be there that is simple squamous epithelium. Now in respiratory zone how many types of cells are there? There are two types of cells. The cells are called as pneumocytes. Pneumocytes. And there are how many types? Pneumocytes are of two types. Type 1 and type 2 pneumocytes. Now type 1 pneumocytes are mainly involved in gases exchange. And type 2 pneumocytes are having some special functions. What are they? First of all, I, we have already seen that these type 2 pneumocytes are stem cells, which means whenever there is a damage to type 1 pneumocytes, these type 2 pneumocytes will divide and differentiate into type 1 pneumocytes. And second important point with the type 2 pneumocytes is they will produce surfactant. Okay. Now, what is the importance of the surfactant? Surfactant decreases surface tension. We all know that in alveoli, okay, in alveoli there is air water interference will be there. Okay, let me show you. Imagine that this is alveoli. Alveoli are lined with water as well as there is air inside alveoli. Okay. So gases are there and water is there. So wherever there is air and water interference, there develops a force called as surface tension. Remember, surface tension is a collapsing force. So this collapsing force is present inside the lungs also. Now the surface tension all the time tries to collapse the lungs. But why lungs are not getting collapsed in you and me is because of the presence of surfactant. Now the surfactant is like a lipid. Now the surfactant acts like an oil layer. Now the surfactant is going to come and takes a place between air and water. Now what will happen? Now the air is not going to meet with the water. So surface tension won't develop. Okay. So Surface tension, the collapsing force is reduced because of us, because of surfactant. And surfactant is produced by type 2 pneumocytes. Now, after seeing this, let's discuss some important points about the surfactant. What exactly is the surfactant? Surfactant, it's a lipoprotein. Okay, it's a lipoprotein made up of lipids as well as protein. Now, which protein? The protein name is called as surfactant protein. Now, there are two important lipids which are present in the surfactant. Now, one is called as a major lipid and the other is minor lipid. Now, what is a major lipid? Major lipid is lecithin. Lecithin also called as dipalmitoyl phosphatidyl phosphatidyl 
choline. Okay, so dipalmitoyl phosphatidyl choline is also called as lecithin, which is a major lipid. Now, minor lipid here is called as pingo myelin. Okay, so sphingomyelin is a minor lipid, lecithin or dipalmitoyl phosphatidyl choline is a major lipid. So what I am trying to put into your mind is the surfactant it's a made up of lipids and as well as proteins lipids and proteins protein is surfactant protein and the lipid components are divided into major lipids and minor lipids the major lipid is lecithin and minor lipid is sphingomyelin now why we have to know this it's because this ratio the ratio of lecithin to sphingomyelin is used to know whether the fetal lungs are matured or not now, if the lecithin sphingomyelin ratio, if it is greater than 2, then it indicates fetal lungs are matured. Okay. Now, again, we will discuss uh, some few more important markers to assess the fetal lung maturity. But as of now, just remember, lecithin sphingomyelin ratio, if it is greater than 2, then we can say fetal lungs are matured. Guys. We have seen the first function of the surfactant that is decreasing the surface tension. The surfactant are, is also having some other two important other functions. What are they? Surfactant, let me show you here. One, it decreases the surface tension. The second function of surfactant is prevents pulmonary. edema okay that's also one of the function and the third function of surfactant is especially the surfactant protein a and d okay surfactant protein a and d they are acting as immune system so they are helping in lung immunity okay important so at the end of the day what are the important points you need to know regarding surfactant surfactant it decreases the surface tension surfactant decreases the uh, prevalence or occurrence of the pulmonary edema and the third important function of the surfactant is surfactant protein a and d are helping in lung immunity okay remember surfactant is a collapsing force now let's see some assessment tests for fetal lung maturity. Okay, now already you know how to how to see whether the fetal lungs are matured or not. First test is lecithin sphingomyelin ratio greater than 2 is an indicative that fetal lungs are matured. Apart from that, there is one more test called a shake test. Shake test where you will be taking amniotic fluid and you are going to shake. Okay, whenever bubbles are going to form, that indicates yes, lipid production has happened in the baby. One of the important lipid is this lecithin sphingomyelin. Now, where lecithin sphingomyelin is nothing but surfactant. So, fetal lungs are also matured. So, shake test or bubble test. Now, what we are doing in the shake test or bubble test? We are taking the amniotic fluid. We are just shaking it. It's a, it's a, it's a bedside test. Whenever you shake, if you see bubbles, it indicates lipid synthesis has started. Only if there is lipid, then only you will be having that bubbly appearance that bubbles are going to be produced. So, shake test or bubble test, if it comes positive, bubbles are forming means yes, fetal lungs are matured. And one more test which you need to know is lamellar body count. Now, what exactly are these lamellar bodies? Lamellar bodies are the storage vesicles. Okay, storage vesicles of surfactant. 
if you have enough amount of lamellar body count then it indicates fetal lungs are mature but important question for the exam is which of the following is the best test best test for fetal lung maturity to assess whether the fetal lungs are matured or not it is phosphatidyl glycerol if you can see this phosphatidyl glycerol in the amniotic fluid then you can say that fetal lungs are matured so phosphatidyl glycerol in amniotic fluid okay is a is a best test for assessing the fetal lung maturity now after this let's see what are the things which are inhibiting the surfactant production and what are the things which will stimulate the surfactant production let's write down here surfactant production surfactant production stimulated by stimulated by as well as inhibited by first let's take out all the things which will help in surfactant production first one is cortisol second important hormone is thyroxine and the third important hormone is prolactin okay cortisol thyroxine and prolactin are the hormones which are helping in the production of surfactant surfactant production is inhibited by insulin so from this we can say if insulin levels are elevated means think like this if insulin levels are elevated means that will cause fetal lungs to mature or not that will inhibit the fetal lungs to mature for example imagine that there was this one mother who is a diabetic patient now imagine if she is taking insulin every day if she is taking 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 insulin that insulin will go into the baby's lung inhibit the surfactant production so from this we can say if a diabetic mother okay if a diabetic patient if she become pregnant then she is at a risk of having a baby with immature lungs so that baby in that baby surfactant is not there so that baby is going to have a this is called as respiratory distress syndrome so respiratory distress syndrome is seen in a, a baby whose mother is having diabetes mellitus whenever she is having diabetes mellitus she is taking insulin every day that insulin will inhibit the production of surfactant in the baby the surfactant is whenever it's not there fetal lungs are not matured so the baby is going to suffer with respiratory distress syndrome now after this let's talk about one more scenario that's called as pre term labor or i should say pre term babies okay why it is important here normally surfactant is something which is produced somewhere around 28 to 32 weeks okay usually surfactant is produced in this period now what if a baby is born at 30 weeks now there will be less surfactant right see surfactant production has started somewhere around 27 to 32 weeks imagine if there was this one baby who is like you know had a like you know mother who is going into preterm labor now she delivered a baby at 30 weeks who knows if uh, we we are not sure whether the surfactant production has started or not so if she delivers a baby now this baby is going to suffer with 
again respiratory distress syndrome so preterm babies are also at risk of having respiratory distress syndrome now how to treat this condition how to treat this condition imagine there was this one female who is going into preterm labor okay at 31 weeks or 30 weeks she is going to preterm labor now we know oh my god if she delivers a baby that baby is not having enough amount of surfactant surfactant production is not there now what we have to do we have to increase the we have to start the production of surfactant in the baby for that what we should do yes think about the concept cortisol glucocorticoids are the ones which stimulate the production of surfactant so we are going to inject glucocorticoids into this mother now this glucocorticoids they will cross the placenta they will go to the baby and stimulate the and stimulate the production of surfactant so treatment for a preterm labor for a preterm labor is done by giving steroids okay now which steroids if you ask me first we can use dexa methasone or else you can also use beta methasone both are glucocorticoids now dexamethasone is given okay it's given 6 milligrams okay every 12 hourly okay for the next four days now beta methasone if you are using beta methasone you are going to use it 12 milligrams every 24 hours okay every 24 hours means every one day you are giving one injection of 12 milligrams of dexamethasone for the next two days usually in india we use this okay dexamethasone injection 6 milligram every 12, 12 hardly for four days so if your female is going to preterm labor what we'll do we will try to stop that preterm labor while trying to stop that preterm labor itself we are giving the injection of glucocorticoids so that okay at least we are starting now the production of surfactant in the baby so that the baby is not going to suffer with the respiratory distress syndrome which is also called as high line membrane disease okay now high line membrane disease is seen in uh, diabetic mothers true babies whose mothers are diabetic that's what i mean by okay so hyaline membrane disease is seen in babies whose, whose, whose mother is having diabetes mellitus now let's discuss about mechanics of breathing what are the muscles of inspiration what are the muscles of expiration that we will discuss in the next video in this video we have clearly discussed about respiratory zone and most importantly surfactant the uses of surfactant hope the video is helpful see you in the next video